One person's swamp is another person's marsh, but one thing that we can all agree on is that nature doesn't stay in boxes the way our fish do. When we're designing aquariums, we're setting things up in a very controlled way, but when we look at nature, we realize that things come out of the water, things are around the water. The line between water and land is actually very, very blurry. So I decided to set a tank up here that was effectively a swamp tank. Um, I know that that can sound bad to some people, but I like flowers. I live in a place that has a lot of winter. I like the surface of water. I like the whole overall look of what I'm doing. So I set my tanks up with plants around them. Now this tank is sort of a no-no in what we're told to do in that it's right in front of a window. When I was choosing the fish that would go into it, I decided to go with a cool water fish, Aphiosemian poliaki. I like this fish because it's easy to breed, it has really neat dark colors, banner fins, it likes to show off, and it's pretty hardy. So I went with Poliaki as a fish. You can see we have males displaying here, and you can also see as the video goes along that there's a lot of fry around. When you have a swamp tank, you have a lot of hiding places. If you're willing to make a tank that has one single species in it, you're much less likely to have problems with cannibalism. My experience is that fish eat the young of other species and tend to be pretty cool about their own, unless they're really hungry or unless you've designed a tank very badly. Now, you could have used pencil fish, you could use live bears, you could use the tiny Bororis rasbora types like the chili rasboras in this same kind of setup and get the same kind of effect. I chose a cooler water fish because I didn't want to have a lid on the tank. I want the plants to be able to grow out. I want the flowers to appear above and below the water because to me the fish are very much like flowers. Now you'll see the males here are holding stations. They, they pick a good area to breed in and they just wait. When the females come by they spawn with them. This is a species that will lay anywhere from 5 to 10 eggs a day when it's really well fed. So breeding is a pretty continual activity for them. I feed the tank as if there's fry in it all the time. And what I discover pretty quickly is that there are fry in it all the time. Now, if you look down at the tank, you're going to see that I've built a false wall. I took a piece of scrap glass. I attached it along the back. Um, I filled it in with peat moss, which I really probably shouldn't have used for ecological reasons. You can treat soil to do the same thing. And I capped it off with sand. I've got plants planted in there. I've got a couple of inches of water, a couple of centimeters, not a lot, because that's where the fry live. The adults don't go in there a lot except to lay eggs and come right back out again. So the tank is set up. You'll see that there are a lot of flowers here. It's working well. Try something like this. It can be a lot of fun.